All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakodash. I also would like to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that do rule well through the Holy Spirit. And I want to say peace, blessings, and salutations as always unto you elect that are across the four winds of this earth. Fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and I'm coming to you all with another lesson, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And I um, caught myself just having a few thoughts, just thinking about what the Lord is doing right now. All right, and it's so many things that the Lord is doing right now, it's hard to uh, stay on track. Because it's so many events and workings and wonders that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is doing. And even as the scriptures say in the book of Psalms, chapter 124, I believe it's in the Psalms 124 where it's written, It is time for thee, O Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. All right, and when, when, a, and when a land is void of the law of the Heavenly Father, that means that that land is full of sin. All right. When there's not no acknowledging of the heavenly father, nor his ways, nor his righteousness, you have lawlessness that's in stake. All right. And the fruits of lawlessness is chaos. And that's exactly what you're seeing over here in Babylon. Slowly but surely, you're seeing more and more chaos that's being lifted out out here in these streets. OK. And I was just thinking about a few of these things and I stumbled across a lesson that um, the elder Ariala had done, and it's titled, More People Will Be Cruelly set, Sent Back to the Spirit World. And he posted that on a remnant saved 144 ba. All right, it's titled, More People Will Be Cruelly Sent Back to the Spirit World. And that's actually a topic that I had in mind. All right, because we clearly see it. Just as I said earlier, when you live in a society, and that society cast away and tosses aside to the side the ways of the heavenly father and righteousness then you have chaos that's going to abound all right and within all this chaos that's to abound nothing good is going to come out of that just as you read here this scripture that i want to pull up here in the book of matthew chapter 24 verse 12 and it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold and what is iniquity Okay, when you go into the word iniquity here in the Greek. Strong's G, 458, anamia, anamia. And when you go into that word, it says the condition of without law. Okay, which is lawlessness. And again, as I stated earlier, when you have a land or a society that's without laws and standards and principles of the Heavenly Father, you have the condition of iniquity, which iniquity also was the process of continually sinning okay that's exactly what iniquity is, is the process of being in a constant state of continual sin okay and again and going into it it's violating all right when you go into these definitions it says being uh because ignorant of it because of violating it it says contempt and violation of law iniquity and wickedness so the scripture saying, because iniquity or lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And when you go into this word cold here in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12, and when you translate that word cold to the original language where it was translated from in the New Testament, you have the Greek word for cold, which is psycho. All right. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now, which is why I wanted to go into this lesson here. All right. You have the spirit of psychosis. That's entered the minds of these everyday people. All right. And again, the scriptures tells you why in Matthew, the 24th chapter, it tells you why you see all these events happening right now, because iniquity is abounding. All right. The constant state of sin and error is abounding. And even as it is written in Proverbs chapter 29, it says, um, loosely paraphrasing, when the wicked increase transgression increaseth also. So you have the constant state of wickedness being done because you have the wickedness that's in ruler that's in rulership you have the wicked that's in rulership which is the nation of esau edom and with them being in the power seat you have all the other nations that are tripping out especially 
of you Israelites. As you read it in the book of St. John, chapter 8, verse 44, our Lord Yahweh said, Ye are of your father the devil. All right, so our people have even taken on the ways and the, character, the characteristics of the wicked. All right, are you clearly seeing it? I mean, there's been constant news of things that's been happening over and over again, especially when it comes to, to Jake and even all the nations. But, you know, hey, the Lord's portion is with Jake. All right, you got the day, a few days after the eclipse, you have that, uh, that uh, what, social media influencer woman. All right, I believe she's a stargazer. If I'm not mistaken, she's actually pretty popular as well. All right. But out there in Los Angeles, California, her and her um, dude and her kids was on the road and she ended up uh, killing her dude and kicking her kids out of the car on the highway and killing herself on the road because she was bugged out over this eclipse. All right. And now that's a very bugged out, psychotic way to go, if you ask me. And even the week of the eclipse, which was just. A little bit over two weeks ago, you had an influx of suicides, an influx of killings that's taken place. And these things ain't slowed down. They've only been increasing time and time again. They've been increasing. All right. Shoot. You have the, uh, the priest out there in Cleveland, Ira Shah, which, you know, that brother was um, talking to us when we was out. Me and my brother Tazama was out there in Cleveland last week. You know, we just had to get a few things uh, taken care of through the spirit, but we ended up breaking bread with those brothers out there in Cleveland. And, you know, the Wadi Al-Bashimi Habashai, that brother ended up leaving his pla his past spot he was staying at because, you know, there was a news alert that went out that, you know, a little, a little teen got shot and killed over there. A young teen got shot and killed over there. And it's every day there's some type of news going on with somebody getting shot, somebody getting killed. I just seen a video just a little bit ago based in an apartment complex outside, and this dude is Jake... I guess his chick ended up um, messing around on him and he ended up finding out and he killed her out there in the streets, right there in the center of the apartment complex for everybody to see. A young Jake, young dude, ain't nothing but puppy love. Chick in high school, probably high school, maybe a little after high school, he shot her because she committed adultery and she cheated on him, which again, you know, according to the scriptures, there's nothing that's unlawful about that, but the scriptures also say all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So, so that definitely ain't the wisest thing to do when you live in Esau society. And again, case in point, the reason why I wanted to bring these scenarios out is because you have people that are being brought to the brink of insanity, which is why they're doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying. All right. Which is why I wanted to bring that scripture out in Matthew, the 12th chapter, as is written, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. All right. So you more you see iniquity and and violating of the laws and, and chaos running rampant, the fruits of that is going to be more psychotic states, more psychotic cases, more nut cases that are out here. And these things are only going to intensify. All right. You have certain people that's acting out right now, but just wait. And I say this very often. Just wait until you can't go to the store no more and and, and get your and get your, uh, your, your, your daily necessities. As you read about it in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, where people are going to be pretty much killing each other, you know, due to the lack of bread. And the scriptures say that. And you're also going to have a lot more people offing each other and killing each other because they can't receive their prescription meds or their alcohol or whatever vice that they take hold on within the society. All right. These dainties, I'd rather say, I'd rather say it like this, these these uh, vices that these people have and the reason why they have these vices, again, due to the meds that they have, the drugs that they take, the coping mechanisms that they have. They're not going to be able to have access to these things here in the very near future. So you think it looks bad and crazy, but just wait. It's going to be a lot more things that are getting ready to happen. A lot more things that are going to get ready to happen. A lot more uh, suicides, a lot more deaths. All right. And the. Scarier part about this is that it's the Heavenly Father that's in control of all these events that are happening right now because the scriptures must be fulfilled. Okay? The scriptures must be fulfilled. As you read it here in the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 68, verse 20, it says, He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto Yahweh the Lord belong the issues of death. All right? So. You have the Heavenly Father that's ultimately in control of all these things that are happening, including these vulgar, cruel deaths that are happening. 
And a lot of these things, a lot of these debts, I'd rather say to specify, are getting a lot more cold or getting a lot more cruel. All right. Again, you have a situation of a woman kick pushing her kids out of the car. Moving car on the highway. And that's terrible if you ask me, but that's the Heavenly Father that's allowing this to be done. As you read about it in the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, where it says, you know, I make the light, I create darkness, I make peace, and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So it's written within the scriptures that it's the Heavenly Father that's in control of all these deaths that are happening. As, it, as I read earlier, the issues of life and death belong to the Lord. So it's safe to say that every issue that you see on the earth pertaining to death, pertaining to psychosis and everything that we're seeing right now, it's the Lord putting a cold spirit on these people to do that. Which is going to make a lot more sense and a lot more easier to understand people eating their children in that day. All right. About 10 years ago, you read that scripture out to somebody on the highways and hedges and they listen in it. And that might be something hard to understand to somebody back then. But you you read it now, even even to yourself, 10, 15 years ago, reading about people eating their children and such. Now, we know what's going to happen and we believe it and we believed it then. But it was harder to visualize and see back then because you had access to so many things. There wasn't no pandemics. All right. There wasn't no, uh, you know, it's just a lot, as much chaos on the earth as it is right now. Literally 15 years ago was 15 years less of iniquity abounding. And as we've constantly seen or as we've seen i'd rather say repetitively the past few years all right these uh prophecies coming into fruition these these spiritual things happening in overdrive so you see the spirit on these people getting a lot worse especially within these last few years so it'll be a light thing for these people to eat their children in that day it'll be a light thing for them to kill their children all right and and, and storm up in freezes It'll be a light thing for these things to happen because we know what the scriptures say and we see these scriptures playing out. We see these prophecies playing out. I say it often. These prophecies are falling off of the page right now. All right. So knowing these things and knowing the spirit that's on these people, it really would behoove us who are believers to continue to walk in wisdom and more prudent, knowing that the times are evil, as the scriptures say. OK. So I wanted to talk about that very briefly. I didn't intend on making this lesson long. It was just while it was on my spirit and the spirit had me just, you know, look at a few videos and it looked like the elder Ariala was in the, the same exact spirit. All right. And again, as he titled his lesson, more people will be cruelly sent back to the spirit world. And that's a very bold and accurate statement. And we're starting to see it more and more and more. All right. This is what the scriptures say. Matter of fact, I said I'd uh, end it off. Well, let's end it off here at a uh, second Ezra chapter nine, verse 22. It's going to be a lot more people, a lot more, you know, for certain loved ones, for certain certain uh, family members, for certain people that are close to us. It's a harsh reality and a hard truth, a harsh truth. Excuse me, that they're not going to make it. All right. Now, obviously, with you being a believer, are you wicked for praying for them? No. The spirit's on you to pray for your family, to pray for certain loved ones and such. By all means, do it. By all means, do it. But just because you pray for them don't mean that they're exactly exempt from the judgment that's to come. And the Lord is preparing our mind to see this stuff, man. You know, it's been a lot of loss that individuals have been experiencing these past few weeks. A lot of loss. All right. And if you don't have a strong spirit, you can be sifted out of this truth by the amount of loss that's here and that's getting ready to come. All right. And again, the scriptures stand firm on this. This is what the scriptures say. So we can't get in our emotions and get bent out of shape for the Lord's program, because, again, this is ultimately the program of the Heavenly Father, which is why I wanted to bring that out in Psalm 68 and 20, going into the issues of life and death belonging to the Lord. Because there's going to be so much death out here. And if your spirit ain't right, it's going to be easy to you to be in the flesh and be offended and try to find something wrong. All right. It'll be easy for that to happen. That's why we got to stay in the spirit, because it's going to be a lot more cruel deaths, a lot more things, a lot, a lot more deaths that's going to happen than before. So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, verse uh, 22. 
Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to start at verse 20 and read down to verse 22. And it says, So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. All right, and again, what creates the peril? The chaos. What are peril? What is peril? Peril represents bad times, evil times. Okay, let's look this word up, peril, really quick. Define peril. And I'm just typing this in in Google. All right, so the word peril is the exposure to the risk of being injured, destroyed, or lost. Okay, it says danger, fire, put the city in peril, and that's a, that's a sentence. It says something that imperils or endangers, risks. All right, so it's going into dangerous times being at hand right now. We're clearly seeing that right now. All right, so it says, so I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it, and peril is dangers. Just as Second Timothy, the third chapter says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. And it tells you, the apostle tells you why these perilous times are coming, because of the iniquity that's being pumped into the earth. All right, the scriptures say the wages of sin is death. And it's going to be a lot of death here within these last days. And, uh, and again, the wages of this death is sin, iniquity being abounding. All right. We're starting to see the pattern of how this things. Um, excuse me. We're starting to see the pattern of how this is happening. OK. The more you start to understand these scriptures and see these prophecies play out, the more you start to foresee events and parts of the patterns play out, especially by the way the scriptures describes it. So second Ezra chapter nine, verse 20 says, so I considered the world and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. All right. The sin, the iniquity that's within the world. That's what's causing these perils to happen. All right. And I quoted it. And I'm going to say it again, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. And that iniquity is tied to chaos, lawlessness, peril. OK. Back in Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 21. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. So this is the Lord saying, even though these are perilous times that I hear, there's still that small remnant that's going to be saved. You still got that small group of individuals that are Israelites that are going to be saved from the said perils that's to come, according to the scriptures. Verse 22, let the multitude perish then which was born in vain. And that multitude is a lot of people. All right. A multitude represents the masses. The multitudes represents the bulk. OK, so it's going to be a multitude of people that are going to perish, just as the scriptures say they were also born in vain. So that's also why you see a lot of these deaths happening the way that they're happening is because the Lord is allowing them to perish because they're born in vain. And also, too, when you understand or I'd rather say start to understand the dynamics of the heavenly father, you start to know that they have to die in order for the righteous to be saved. All right. Scripture goes into the wicked and their debts have to act as an atonement or a ransom to the righteous. OK, so you have an influx or multitude of individuals that are going to have to die in very cruel ways, whether they're killing each other, whether they're whether they're eating each other, whether they're killing themselves. OK, this all has to take place in order for us to be saved in order for that remnant to be made perfect. All right. Back in second Ezra nine and twenty two, let the multitude perish then which was born in vain and let my great be kept in my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. All right. So you got the small remnant that's being made perfect and we are also being made perfect through suffering. And there's a lot of long suffering that we're going to have to experience here within these last days. It's one thing to long to, to suffer longly. All right. Um, you know, when you feel like you've been done wrong. When you believe you've been done dirty. All right. When you have to bear a certain brother's shortcomings. All right. That's one form of long suffering. And there's another form of long suffering going into having to suffer the times that's getting ready to come. All the death that's getting ready to be out here. All right. We're going to have to suffer through all that as well. All right. But through that suffering, through the Holy Spirit, the elect are going to be made perfect. OK. OK. So having to see all this loss is going to have to strengthen us so we can be made perfect because the Lord is definitely putting us, you know, through um, phases of experience and loss. 
That way we can gain and understand what gain actually is. So I'm going to end it off for that. Hopefully this was edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say peace, blessings, and salutations as always unto you elect that are across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.